Hello chaps, welcome to John Robson Guitar Tuition once again, I do hope you're well. Now then, today's video is all about the method that I use for figuring out what chords are in a song. Um, the song we're going to be using today for this example is an old Mike Oldfield hit from the 80s called Moonlight Shadow, featuring the rather wonderful Maggie Riley on vocals. Whatever happened to her? Anyway, uh, the first stage to figuring out what chords are in a song is to figure out the first chord, and here's how I do that. Okay, the first stage in figuring out a mystery chord is to get some sort of reference point to work from, a note that we can identify as being, you know, in the chord. And a brilliant uh, tool for doing this is Audacity. It's a free bit of uh, audio editing software, and if you don't have it, I recommend that you grab it because there are so many things that you can use it for. So, what I'm going to do now is show you how to use Audacity to get our initial reference note. As you can see, I've loaded the song into Audacity, and using the selection tool, I've highlighted the first chord. Now all I have to do is hit the shift key and the space bar and this chord will now loop indefinitely, like this. Right, now what I'm going to do, since I've got that chord looping away there, is I'm going to play some notes on the top E string just in the first few frets until I find one that actually sounds in tune with the chord. And that's basically a good thing to remember. If a note sounds in tune with a chord, then that note is in the chord, and that's our reference point. So here's me doing exactly that. Right then, so we figured out that uh, the reference note for the chord that we're looking at is this open E note, or any E note for that matter. Now what we have to do is figure out which chords actually contain an E note, and that will give us a bunch of chords, and one of them will be the chord that we're listening to in that song. So here's how we figure out which chords contain an E note. Well, here we have an E major chord, which quite obviously contains an E note, as does an E minor chord. But what other chords also have an E note in them? Well, these notes make up an A major chord, and as you can see, one of them is an E note, so there's an E in an A chord as well. And an A minor chord, that also contains an E note. Where else can we go? Oh, here we are. A C chord contains an E note, and so does a C sharp minor chord. So here are the six chords which contain the note of E. We have an E major, an A major, and a C major. We also have three minor chords, E minor, A minor, and C sharp minor. And all you got to do in order to find out which is the right one is try them all out. See which one sounds right. Right, so we've figured out that the first chord in the song is a C-sharp minor. Um, what about the rest of the chords? Well, we'll come to those in a moment. But before we get on to um, how you'd figure out what the rest of the chords are in the song, let's see what we can learn from this process where we've identified C-sharp minor as the um, initial chord in this Mike Oldfield song. There must be some sort of generalised rule that we can come up with for generating a set of possible chords from any given reference note. So let's just have a quick look at that. 
Right, if we take those six chords, the E major, the E minor, the A major, the A minor, the C major and the C sharp minor, and if we look at how far away they are in terms of semitones or frets from our E reference note, we can develop a set of rules which tell us which chords any given reference note will be found in. So as you can see, we have a major and a minor chord based on the reference note itself. We then have another major and another minor chord, five semitones or frets above the reference note. Then we have a major chord, eight semitones or frets above the reference note, and finally a minor chord, nine semitones above the reference note. So simply by remembering one simple six digit number, double zero, double five, eight nine, and remembering that it always goes major minor, major minor, major minor. So you've got a major chord zero above your reference point, a minor chord zero above your reference point, a major chord five above your reference point, a minor chord five above your reference point, a major chord eight above your reference point, and a minor chord nine above your reference point. So double zero, double five, eight, nine, major minor, major minor, major minor. You get the idea. That's pretty easy to remember. And once you've got that, you can figure out any chord. Basically, you just find your reference note and then apply that and there's your six possible chords. Now, most people have no problem conceptually with this. Where they fall down is counting up and down the chromatic scale. So this might be revealing some areas that you do need to work on. Do you know, for instance, what note is 8 frets above any other given note, or 9 frets above any other given note? If not, then you need to brush up on that a little bit. Here's a little tip. Everything must always add up to 12. So, for instance, if I want to know what note is um, 8 frets above G, there's a G note there, there's the 8th fret. Now that is a D sharp or E flat note. But there's another G there at the 12th fret. So instead of having to count 8 from that direction, I can count 4 in this direction. 8 plus 4 is 12. So if you're kind of counting more than 6, basically, it's easier to count back in the other direction. Just make sure that it adds up to 12. So 8 in one direction is the same as 4 in the other direction, 11 in one direction is the same as 1 in the other direction, and so on. But if you do need to brush up on knowing the order of notes in the chromatic scale, then there's a little project for you to be working on. Another thing that tends to trip people up when they're doing this is they'll maybe work out where um, which are the six possible chords, but then they won't know where they are. Um, you know, a lot of people can play bar chords, I find, you know, uh, or they'll get to the point where they can play bar chords and they'll know that that's an F and they'll probably know that that's a B minor. But you start getting up here into this part of the neck, and things aren't quite as, as certain and as, as definite as they need to be. So if that's you, then you've got some work to do on uh, memorising where your bar chords are or at least being able to figure them out on the fly. So, you know. Doing these kind of exercises like this um, often reveals other areas that you maybe didn't know you had to work on, and maybe that's giving you some food for thought. Anyway, we've got the first chord in the tune. How do we get the next uh, chord, and the one after that, and the one after that? Well, you could go through exactly the same process. Just find your reference note, and then generate a, a set of six possible chords, and, you know, choose the right one but that's going to take a long time so there must be some quicker way of doing it well there is if you um, see an A chord in a song then you're probably going to start thinking well I bet there's going to be a D chord or an E chord or a G chord sometime soon so you probably already have an instinctive understanding of which chords tend to go together maybe it's a little bit more than an instinctive understanding. Maybe you kind of know which chords all belong in the same keys together. And if you don't, then there's a PDF uh, showing all of that in the description box below. So feel free to grab a copy. 
basically what I do is I get the first chord in the song and then I start thinking okay which other chords are likely to be um, alongside that chord you know in the same key as that chord or whatever and then I'll start trying some out possibly um, in fact quite often usually um, I'll have a pretty good ear for what kind of chord sequence it is I mean there are certain off the peg chord sequences that get used over and over again the 12 bar blues would be a, a an obvious example of that or you know what what we probably all think of as the stand by me chord sequence and if you learn to recognize the, the overall shape of those different chord sequences and that you know there's probably half a dozen that um, you need to be really good at recognizing then all you need to do is figure out that first chord and then by default you, you automatically know what the next chord and the one after that and the one after that are going to be and you can pretty much just do this uh, by ear you'll even get to the point where you'll learn to recognize what the first chord is just by listening to it I don't have perfect pitch but you know certainly when it's played on a guitar you can I think you can recognize something as obvious as a big fat resonant open E chord like that and then you know you're away you can just grab the rest of the chords just by by ear really by recognizing the, the shape of the overall chord sequence so that's how I do it um, I hope you found this video useful instructive maybe even a little bit enlightening and if you have please hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell that way you'll get to see more videos like this if you live on Teesside in the northeast of England and you would like some tailored one-to-one -one guitar tuition, then please feel free to get in touch via the details at the end of this video. Even if you don't live on Teesside, get in touch anyway because I also do lessons via Skype. And just before we go, I'll give a, the usual plug for my two albums that are out at the moment, The Whiskey Made Me Do It and Handles for Forks both of which are available on all major platforms and both of which are absolutely chock full of shreddy, bluesy, melodic, instrumental rock guitar playing. So what's not to like there, frankly? And with that, I'll leave you all uh, till next time. I'll see you then. Bye for now, folks.